What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today let's get started with what's next for Alex Pereira after his UFC 300 win. UFC 300 definitely lived up to the hype. We were treated to one of the most action-packed pay-per-view events in recent memory, and the card was topped off in dramatic fashion by Alex Pereira's devastating first-round knockout over former light heavyweight champion Jamal Hill. Pereira dropped Hill with a trademark left hook and finished the American with some vicious ground and pound. The former glory kickboxing champion continues to astound both fans and media with his accomplishments, having become a two-weight world champion in both kickboxing and MMA, despite having only competed in professional mixed martial arts 12 times. Poton was awarded his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt by his coach and former UFC champion Glover Teixeira in the octagon immediately afterwards. In his post-fight interview with Joe Rogan, he surprised everybody by seemingly requesting to fight again in three weeks when the UFC makes its trip to Brazil. He said, I'm injury free. I want to fight in Brazil. I know it's a short time, but let's see what happens. I know there needs to be promotion for a title fight, so I don't care. Let me do a fight at heavyweight. Ariel Hawani seemed to be in agreement as he tweeted, put at it on 301, he never broke a sweat. As for Jamal Hill, it's back to the drawing board. Sweet Dreams tasted defeat for only the second time in his career and faces a long road back to the top of the division. Perhaps a fight with Alexander Rockich or Anthony Smith could be in the pipeline. Here's what Jamal Hill had to say after losing at UFC 300. Oh well, it's the game we play, got caught. Uh, for anybody that care, I'm good. I'm on well. We still doing our thing tonight. Y'all know where we at. We over at Hawkinson. And uh, yeah, man, we just build and come right back. Moving to the BMF title fight now, Justin Gaethje vs Max Holloway's recap. In what surely will go down as one of the most exciting moments in UFC history, Max Holloway knocked out Justin Gaethje with just one second remaining in the fifth round of their BMF title bout. Max dominated the vast majority of the fight, looking to have a considerable speed advantage over his opponent. He broke Gaethje's nose with a spinning kick at the end of round one, and Gaethje seemed to really struggle with his breathing throughout the rest of the fight. Holloway always looked to be a step ahead of Gaethje, using footwork and feints to keep him at bay, and managed to land damaging blows in every round. Gaethje did manage to become the first fighter in UFC history to knock the Hawaiian down in the fourth round, but Holloway bounced right back up and continued to outbox his opponent. It looked like Holloway was coasting to a decision victory, but in the final seconds, he called out Gaethje to stand and trade in the center of the octagon, and in the chaos that ensued, an overhand right from Holloway left Gaethje face down on the canvas, and referee Mark Goddard waved it off with one second remaining. This victory would seem to open up the world of possibilities for Max. He remains the number one contender at featherweight and can now also be included in the mix at 155 pounds. Speaking after the fight, he seemed unwilling to pick his next step just yet. Yeah, we see what happens. We see what happens. Like I said, the El Melador, he's, uh, he's, 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 he's uh, trying, to, trying to run away from a boo in the pen. You know, I'm here. Like I said, I talked to a lot of media. They asked me what I'm going to do, stay at 55, go back down. I told them to ask me after the fight because Justin was a handful. Uh, you know, I, I didn't want to become a highlight. I wanted to make a blessed highlight. I think we did that. And now we sit back, we wait, you know, in this game, especially with you knowing at anything, in any game, when you got options, life's good. Next up, Israel Adesanya goes off on Drakus Duplessis. Before Alex Pereira and Jamal Hill were finally announced as headliners for UFC 300, many other big name fighters were rumored to be in the running for the headlining spot at the landmark event. Former middleweight champion Israel Adesanya was one of those names in the conversation, as talk of him returning after a self-imposed hiatus to take on Drakus Duplessis seemed to be growing stronger by the day. The last stylebender insists that the idea of him headlining UFC 300 was more than just a rumor, and the bout was all but agreed upon only for Duplessis to back out at a late stage. Speaking on the MMA Hour, Adesanya revealed that he had gone as far to begin training for the fight before it was revealed that the fight was off the table. I was heartbroken because um, I thought it was us and I was like, oh, they would announce it, they would announce it. And Tim was holding out because he and Hunter, Shara Hunter and Dana, they were like going back and forth. And then I'm glad because I, I'm glad Tim called me before they announced it, like I think three minutes before they announced Jamal versus Alex because if I found out on Instagram, I would have been like, oh, Hunter and Dana would have got calls. Because I was, I was ready. I was training. In your mind, all was it a done deal? I thought it was done. I was like, oh, I'm, I was training. Wow. I went For to how Switzerland. Long? I was training probably about four weeks, three weeks. I was on. No way. Yeah. It would seem Adesanya was not impressed with Duplessis' reluctance to defend the 185 pound title. They're not built like us. It's different. Like everyone now. Okay, so I wasn't even fully healed. I'm taking time off. And when the opportunity presented itself, I was like, it's history. It's, this is monumental, UFC 300, fuck it, let's do it. But again, they're not built like us. Myself, Alex Volkanovsky, Kamaru Rusman, we were guys when we were champions. Just fuck it, just fight. Fuck the belt, I got belts at home. Even fans, whenever they see me, they're like, oh man, hope you get that belt back. I'm like, bitch, they're at the house. I'm a two-time middleweight champion, soon to be three. It's at the house. It's not about the belt, I'm coming for the heads. 
right now it's about fighting while you can but he's young he's done what he's done got this far become champion so good on him but yeah it is what it is you want to hold on to that belt and be cozy that's that's your prerogative but yeah when when we were doing that the belt it was just about fighting the best and that's it Adesanya first captured the title back in 2019 when he knocked out Robert Whitaker at UFC 243. He went on to defend the belt on numerous occasions before somewhat surprisingly losing it to Sean Strickland at UFC 293 last September. Strickland was then defeated by Duplessis in his first title defense at UFC 297 in January of this year, and it's expected Adesanya will be next in line considering Dana White announced Sean Strickland vs Paulo Costa for UFC 302 on June 1st. Now moving back to the fallout from UFC 300, what's next for Bo Nickel after UFC 300? Middleweight prospect Bo Nickel won his third consecutive fight inside the octagon to move to 6-0 when he submitted Cody Brundage in the main card opener at UFC 300. This was the longest fight of Nickel's career and the first time he's seen a second round. Nickel dominated Brundage through the first round before taking his back in the second and sinking a rear naked choke to maintain his 100% finishing rate as a professional. There was a lot of criticism from fans and media when this bout was announced on the main card, alongside so many current and former champions, with many feeling Nickel is receiving special treatment from the UFC. And the reception the Penn State wrestling phenom received from fans in the arena was lukewarm, to say the least. Booze rang out the T-Mobile arena as Nickel dominated the wrestling exchanges early, and he seemed to signal to fans immediately after the finish that he wasn't pleased with his general performance. In the post-fight press conference, he expressed some frustrations, but also looked for the positives from his fight. Um, I think I feel mixed emotions about my performance. Obviously, anytime uh, you get a win, you get a finish, it feels, you know, that's a good that's a good thing. But I don't really compete and fight and train um, just to get a win or to get a finish. So um, that being said, I think there's a lot to improve on, a lot that I could have done differently. But um, I'm grateful for the experience, you know. Uh, got to the second round for the first time in my career. Got punched uh, in a real fight for the first time in my career. So, you know, those not, might not seem like good things, but I think they'll only help me in the long run. Nickel called for a fight with number 12 ranked Anthony Fluffy Hernandez immediately afterwards, asserting that he's ready for the jump in competition levels. I just think that would be a, a fun fight, a great fight. He's a guy that has great cardio, wrestling, good striking, he's well-rounded, and uh, got a big win in his last fight. And I think that's, you know, and then and very, very shortly, if it's not my next fight, it'll be soon, but that's the type of guys that I want to be fighting. You know, I don't even, he, he was just the name that came to my mind because I watched this fight recently, but any of these guys, um, you know, around uh, that ranking, around that part of division are, are guys that I'm ready for. You know, I'll, if, if I have to get a couple more fights before I'm fighting ranked guys, then that's fine. That's a discussion between myself um, and the UFC, but, uh, you know, I, I want to start fighting better guys and he's a guy I see as a better, a better uh, fighter. Hernandez is on a five-fight win streak in the middleweight division and last appeared at UFC 298 where he picked up a submission victory. And now, a fight announcement we've all been waiting for. Dana White reveals plans for Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor took to Instagram this week to announce that he'll be fighting Michael Chandler. His caption below a photo of him squaring off with a man in a Teletubby costume read, The fight is on, McGregor vs Chandler. See you on the date I said. And UFC President Dana White confirmed in the UFC 300 post-fight press conference that the pair will, indeed, fight on June 29th at 170 pounds. June 29th. Connor versus Chandler. Five rounds, 170 pounds. By the time International Fight Week arrives, McGregor will have been out of competitive action for three years. Although it's rumored he's been deep in training for this bout since he recently finished his media obligations for the debut movie Roadhouse, Chandler also has been inactive, sitting out since his loss to Dustin Poirier early last year. McGregor and Chandler appeared as coaches on season 31 of The Ultimate Fighter almost a year ago, and the will they won't they saga between the pair has rumbled ever since. Conor has repeatedly voiced his frustration as the UFC seemed to keep him waiting for a date, in a move that was rumored to be linked to UFC's new negotiations for a TV deal. However, Dana stated that the delay was due to McGregor's busy schedule. The Dubliner insists he's ready to get back into fighting consistently, telling James Corden this week, I'm barely touched, I only got clicked once, and then the leg break. That's it. I put more people to sleep than anesthesia. So as far as freshness, I'm as fresh as it gets in the business. Michael Chandler went on Instagram responding to all the critics saying the fight won't happen. Here's the video. I told you we'd be right here. The fight is announced. It's time to start preparing. Thank you guys who have been on this journey with me. Thank you. Those of you who have believed in me, now it's time to go get the job done. And to all you hating ass mother pieces of sitting around on your keyboards in your grandma's basement. All right, back to our regular scheduled program. God bless. 
Next up, let's take a look at Charles Oliveira versus Armin Sarukian's recap. We were treated to an amazing contest between the two top contenders in the lightweight division, as rising prospect Armin Sarukian edged past the former champion Charles Oliveira. Oliveira came into this bout as the owner of the most submission wins in UFC history with 16, and almost added to that total in the first round when he snatched up Sarukian's neck in a guillotine. In a moment very similar to the infamous Brian Ortega Alexander Volkanovsky fight, Sarukian looked to be going to sleep but battled gamely and managed a miraculous escape. Sarukian had a much better second round, taking Oliveira down and landing some impressive ground and pound. He caused quite a lot of damage to the Brazilian, meaning both fighters entered round three with the fight still up for grabs. Oliveira seemed a little fatigued in the third round, and again, Sarukian landed a takedown and looked to be comfortable on the ground while landing strikes. There was late drama as Dubranch cinched up a darsh choke and almost finished Sarukian right at the death. One judge scored at 29-28 for Oliveira, but Sarukian is the one who walked away with his hand raised and moves forward in the 155 pound rankings. Immediately after the fight, lightweight champion Islam Makachev reacted by tweeting, Be ready. See you soon, boy. Sarukian responded to Makachev's call out in the post-fight interview. Islam tweeted, uh, be ready, see you soon, boy, but he didn't, he wasn't, he didn't specify it was you or Dustin or anyone. So I guess what's your message for Islam? See you soon, boy. He seemed to hint that the June 29th card on International Fight Week could be when we see them square off. And the end of June, middle of like summer and the end of summer, doesn't matter. I need like rest three weeks, two, three weeks because like I've been training since January nonstop, since de December because like after my last fight, my manager told me you're gonna fight for the contender number one, Gage or Oliveira. And I was super excited. I started training hard and like since that three months left or three and a half months left and i was i was training so hard and like i gotta rest a little bit and then come back and have a full training camp and beat islam makachev and be ready for that fight however it was announced in the post-fight press conference that makachev will take on dustin poirier in the main event of ufc 302 on june 1st meaning sarukian will have to wait in line for a little longer armand reacted to the fight announcement on x by saying i'm fighting the winner Next up, Dana White goes off on media for John Jones story. Dana White has addressed the latest legal drama surrounding UFC heavyweight champion John Jones. Earlier this month, Jones became the subject of countless headlines when a drug-free sport employee filed a complaint against him, accusing him of threatening to kill her and stealing her phone during a visit to his home to collect samples for a routine drug test. John addressed the situation on social media, posting CCTV footage from the agent and her colleague leaving his home, in which she appeared to high-five him. He accused her of unprofessionalism and denied media reports that he had been arrested. Dana White spoke about the controversy at a press conference this week after a power slap event and lashed out at the media for their inaccurate reporting of the events. No, I mean, I think, I, I think that thing's going to play out legally, however it is. I, I think you saw that, that he posted footage. Um, but again, the fact that anybody posted, NBC News posted that he was arrested. NBC News, we're not talking about f***ing, you know, one of these dot coms. It's just, I don't know, man, it's crazy. You know how I get about this, this stuff. But when NBC, yeah, none of, anybody in this room wants to hear what I have to say right now. That I promise you. Uh, but when NBC News is doing it, wow. Jones has been out of action due to a torn pectoral muscle he sustained in October, which causes fighting against Stipe Miocic at UFC 295 to be canceled. Hopefully we see him step back into the octagon soon. Dana White reveals bad news after UFC 300. During Armin Sarukian's walkout to his fight with Charles Oliveira, he seemed to get into an altercation with a fan where punches were exchanged. Dana White addressed this at the post-fight press conference by saying UFC would likely get sued. You might not want to hang over the uh, things and grab people when they're walking out. These guys are all piped up and, and whatever, and I'm sure we're probably going to get sued. I'm, uh, we'll deal with that on Monday too. Here are the top comments from last video. Hill talked all that crap, man. Don't listen to Izzy's advice. Jamal talked so much shit, he's eating his words. This will forever be remembered as the day Max Holloway cemented his BMF status for us all to see and none to deny. That, my friends, is quite possibly the best ending to a fight in history. I don't know how people are talking shit about Justin choosing to bang for the last 10 seconds. From his perspective, if he had the option, it'd be stupid not to take it. It was his one shot left at winning if he landed one big clean shot.